Hey guys, hello everyone. Is everyone having a blast in the Love Blooms Challenge? It's been so much fun. I have enjoyed all the presenters and I can't wait to sit down and paint many of the designs. So who's been participating and who's been watching? Isn't it a great group of artists? I love um, when we do a collab or a challenge like this where we can all get together and everybody has a little bit different style to their work. So we are here this afternoon to paint the lady with the rose bouquet. So that's going to be fun. So hello, I see you guys popping in. Um, say hello. And I am coming to you through StreamYard. So if you see that little... Um, invitation there to leave your name um sign in with uh, StreamYard. i can see your name when you comment so i will bring the chat up and i would love to see you all say hello when you come on and let me know where you're watching from i did a, a segment this morning and we had someone from australia and spain and sometimes just right in town here with me i'm coming to you from new england i'm in massachusetts hello donna thanks for watching this is going to be a fun take on the painting I can never leave well enough alone. If any of you know me, I always have to add a little extra something and I'm always encouraging you to do the same exact thing. Please take these designs and these patterns and these lessons and run with them and use your own colors and your own elements. It's so fun to change things up. Hey, Gail. Hi, everyone. Cheryl and Tarita. Jennifer. Oh, Tara, hello. Good to see you. And thank you for all your hard work arranging this fabulous challenge. Lisa from Virginia. I'm in, like I said, in New England, Oregon, Louisiana. I love it. I love to see where you're all from. It's so cool to see that we can all from all parts of the world get together and paint together. And I love painting with you guys. I love to sit and paint. But when I have company, I love going live and we can just paint along, ask questions and all the things. So let me um, let me make it so that you can I'm going to get the banner out of the way, first of all, so you can see. And I'm going to swap around here so you can actually see the painting we're doing today. And what I love about this is I love painting people. But this one, if you're a little shy or a little afraid to jump in and paint people, look at We can paint this person, but she doesn't have a face, so you can just cover it up. I love the paintings that you see with the bouquets, the ladies holding the bouquets and the big flowers. So I've been wanting to paint something like that for a while. And this challenge kind of was perfect because I reworked this a little bit. We're just using our acrylic paints. Um, if you know me, I, I know we all love all the colors, but I try to go a little simple sometimes with just the primaries and helping you along how to mix your colors. What I wanna make clear is you don't have to have all the things you could jump right in and paint with what you have. I use a combination of the craft paints. I like the deco art. Whatever you have works. I do love the Liquitex fluids. I use the basics of those a lot and we mix. I do a lot of online teaching and in person. And I also have a couple of memberships. And so I do have um, a certain uh, basic color list that I like to go by. But of course, we all love to go and buy all the colors, right? Because there's so many and it's so fun. But if you only have a few or you want just to get started with a little bit, you can certainly do that. So I've used those colors here. I'll tell you what I'm using as I go along and I will make up a color chart if you need. But really what you have in these colors will certainly work. We're going to start. Um, this was an 11 by 14. I believe I gave you tracers in a few different sizes. I just happen to have a piece of uh canvas board. I like to paint a lot of my samples on Canson. It's a plein air painters pad. It's kind of cool because I, I don't have to store as many stretch canvases and it's a Canva art board. It comes in all sizes and it's kind of nice to paint on when I have a storage issue and don't want to, you know, have all those uh, pa uh, paintings around. And uh, I'm going to bring the comments back up because I sort of put them to the side. Hey, Michelle and Charlotte. Thank you guys for watching. Colleen. Oh, Brutland Mass. Yes. Yeah. My neighbor over here, not too far from me at all. So I traced my design on. I know it's a little light, but it's there. I'm going to do my background first. If you know uh, me, I paint usually background first, uh, forward, and dark to light a lot of times. So this is a really simple background that I use for a lot of paintings. It's simple enough to not take away from your elements or your focal point, your point of interest. I don't want anything too busy back there. We've got a lot going on with the, with the lady and the vase and all that. So it's a very simple background, and you can use this technique to do backgrounds of all sorts, which is kind of cool. So I've just got out a couple colors for the background. I'm going to do dark, and then I kind of dry brush a little bit of a lighter shade up. I, I think I may want to go a little darker. This is the jewel green. 
I think I'm going to deepen it up a little bit with the thalo, uh, thalo, um, a thalo green. I have my lighter shade, which is the teal mint. I may lighten it up with some white. So this is just my background palette. You can use whatever big brush you have. I Lots of times you'll see me painting with these hog bristle brushes. It's a filbert, which is that rounded. Oh, you know what, Tara? I didn't mean that, but yeah, we kind of do. We could even do more of a plaid shirt on her. I meant to wear something flowery, but um, alas, I, I haven't had time today to change into anything flowery. We are in New England and believe it or not, it's 80 today. So in my basement, it's a little chillier, but I, um, I didn't get time to be all flowery. So, so anyhow, uh, I love to have a few sizes of these. What I like about these brushes, they're stick, they, stiff. They have a lot of texture. You can dig right in and get the nooks and crannies of your canvas. Uh, but if you just have a wider or a half inch or three quarter inch brush, use what you have. And all I'm going to do is get a darker green uh, teal, kind of a teal. I, I'm, I'm so into the teal and pink, and it's been a long while, and I haven't tired of it yet. So we're just going to go around the pattern best you can. If you want to be real careful and use a little brush, you can. But I'm going to paint these elements over this. I'm not going to worry. As long as I know where they are, roughly, that's all I need. And I want to just get a coat of this dark green. Because then when it's dry, I dry brush other colors. It could even almost be a little wet and wet too over it. So let's just get a background on here. And let's see, her hair comes down around here. A few leaves peek out. I may do two coats of this. We'll see how it covers. And the idea on this is just kind of these crisscrossy strokes. I don't want to go up and down or across. It will leave streaks. If I do this and it's a little streaky, it sort of looks like it's supposed to be that way. This is how I would put a base coat on many of my landscapes and things. If it was a seascape, that would be the only time I would go back and forth or water of some sort. But for the most part, I would just do this sort of crisscrossing bit. Even if it was a field or a mountain or something, I start that way. Primarily because the, the paint, the acrylic is a little transparent. You guys know that. You need two coats sometimes to cover things. And, and a little suggestion there is if it needs multiple coats, put a nice thin coat on and let it dry really well in between. Because if you're just going wet and wet and, and putting on your second coat while the first coat's wet, you're just going to pull off that first coat. So you're really not getting anywhere. So get it on there. If you're impatient, you can put a hairdryer or a heat gun to it and, and dry it up a little bit. Uh, Jerry, hello from Texas. Thank you, Jerry. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And Mary, hello, Mary. Mary's um, new in my art membership, and we are having fun. You see some of my paintings behind me on my wall, and lots of those are from the membership. So I do have, I have a free private community, which I'll share the link for. It might even be here somewhere, but I'll share the link, and I'd love it if you joined me over there. And I also have some paid classes and membership, which I can, you know, give you more information if you are interested, but uh, we do have fun painting some really unusual paintings of all sorts. We do pets. We did paint your pet a few months ago. We um, do landscapes and seascapes and still lives and people and, and, and just a variety, not to overwhelm, but to just give everybody a choice of what they might like to paint. And we'll just get this background done. And again, this background would look, you could do any color. I've done it. Um, in a still life I just finished with more of a brick red with the daffodils. They really pop on that background. So this sort of background, if you're, I, you know, you have a painting idea, but you don't know what to do in the background. You don't want to get a whole scene. This is really good. Just put on a darker color of the shade you like, and then we're just going to bring it up with textured brush strokes. And that's enough in the background. It's enough that we don't have to get too busy. I'm working on this canvas board, and, and sometimes I do gesso it first. I did not this time, so the paint dries fairly quickly. So we can get this coat on there and maybe put a quick little second coat, not in the whole thing, just here and there. And then we'll do, I'll start with the layers of the lighter shades. So, Oh, wow. 90s. It's crazy weather. This is, I was talking to someone on my walk this morning and it's so true. It's like, okay, in a week we probably could have snow again. This is New England. So, but yeah. Terry, thank you. I appreciate that. And Sandy from Ohio, thank you guys for watching. Have you been watching all of the um, presenters? I love the um, I love Angie's boot, the cowboy boots. That was really fun. I love them all. Teresa's, Terry, yours was so cool with the gold. And I forget who did uh, 
Dina, the leopard spots. I love painting leopard spots. That was really fun. So, so it's great because the recordings are going to be there. You guys could go and watch them. But I would love to see your interpretation of the painting too or any of your paintings. Just put them up there to share. It's a nice no judgment zone place. You could share your work and everyone is going to be so helpful and, and it's great to get feedback that way. Okay, this is a little bigger than the 11 by 14. So I have extra space at, to at the top, which we will just cover for now, but don't you don't have to be too concerned about that. Hello, hey guys. All right, so dry down here and I'm gonna just get a little more. I love the phthalo blue and phthalo green and I can only find it in Liquitex. I can't get it, I, I've tried matching so many of the craft paints, but if you're looking for two fabulous colors, a lot of pigment. Oh, I'm showing you Payne's gray, but I meant to show you phthalo blue and green. These mixed will give you this the perfect shade of teal. Uh, add a little white, you get all shades. You can uh, paint beautiful oceans with those two colors. I use those two colors primarily for my blues and greens, really. Mix that green with a primary yellow, and you get beautiful greens. So anyway, I do like the... Uh, the fluids for that. And, and it's a good price. It's not a lot. This is double of what you get in your little craft paints. And I, and I, I might be wrong, but I think they're about $4.99 maybe. So I'm not going to, like I said, go everywhere, but I'm just going to give these little brush strokey thing, you know, like my really technical terms, you know, kind of a little second coat here and there, just because I don't want too much of the white of the canvas showing through. I really want to be able to build up the teal colors. And oh, you guys, you know, any questions as we go along, please post them there in the comments. If I don't see them for some reason now, I will certainly come back and address them. Oh, Charlotte, I know Charlotte did our, like I said, in my membership, we did Paint Your Pet, which was my first time doing it uh, virtually. I didn't know how that would go, but it was really a lot of fun and everybody did amazing. Everybody sent me a photo of their pup. I made a tracer. I put it through an app I use just to kind of break it down a little more to make it easier to paint. And then we got together by Zoom twice and we sort of just went through and painted everybody's pets. It was so fun and everybody's came out wonderful. Really a lot of fun. We do have fun in our group. Hey, Robin, Anna Maria, hello, welcome. Okay, that's enough. It's not like I sat and went with a little brush and got every area, nope. It's just, it is what it is. When that dries, I'm going to put another little quick coat on. And let me show you the original so you can kind of see. So can you see, you can see the dark through a little bit. And then we're just gonna take more of a dry brush and just like with those same crisscrossy strokes, build it up. You could go even lighter if you want in places just to make it look a little shadowed and highlighted in the background. But we will do that in one moment. What I wanna say is when I paint, I use a lot of lights and darks. That's how I make my objects look like they have form, shadows and highlights. That is really um, key. So if you're, you know, developing a painting and you don't know really how to paint it, and what should I do? Remember, as long as you have some shadows and highlights and it gives, it gives it form and it looks rounded. So that's what we're going to do here once we get going. I put the color of the shirt, which is that salmon color. And then I take a little bit of a maroon wash. You can see the shading. And, and you can use your common sense almost. Where's my light source? Or regardless, you're holding a vase in front of you. It's going to cast a shadow. Cast a shadow on the inside here. And same um, here. It's a little brighter in the front. So it's a little brighter here, a little darker on the edges, and it gives it form. So I will give you two different ways we will use in the painting of achieving that. Sometimes I blend wet and wet. We're painting in acrylics. I'm um, an oil painter from way back, and I love the fact that I could sit there and blend and blend and blend, but I can't with acrylic, so I force it a little bit to be like oil paint. I'll get two colors wet side by side, dry brush them together. And sometimes I'll do a wash. So here's an example where more it was like the wet on wet, both colors wet, but on here, I just did a little wash. After the salmon colors dry, I gave a little wash of the maroon. So I'm going to show you a few techniques today like that. And again, that's just what I do to, to my paintings. Back to forward, dark to light, and make sure I give some nice shadows and some really nice highlights, especially put your highlights on. And many times it dries, it doesn't pop as much. You can just put as many layers of little white strokes or highlights as you need as you go. So it is kind of just almost a little method of the way I paint. Same brush I'm going to use. If going into a very similar color, I'm just going to wipe the brush off. I don't need to really wash that. 
When I am doing especially dry brushes or blending, I don't want any water in my brush. If I were to wash it, make sure you squeeze all of that uh, water out of there. So I'm gonna go into my lighter teal here. I don't wanna take a big brush load of paint and start making those X-y strokes. It will be too harsh. I would rather go on with the dry brush, so I'll just take some off. I'd rather have you go so light you need to do it again than go too heavy. So just, just for an experiment, just start. Just kind of start with it light and you can always build it up. I'd rather have you go a little lighter like that. So I'm gonna to try to scoot around the little areas that are wet still. And, I, and this is a small area, but I am trying to do crisscrossy strokes. That's not to say you have to do that. You could do a little circly stroke. You just, again, don't really wanna do straight across or up and down, because then you'll really see streaks. So I'm starting light and I will build this up, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put this little bit of light teal. And I usually use the same family of colors. If I'm doing reds, I'll get a big a maroon background, get a little brighter and maybe work my way up to a pink. I know, Tarita, we were just, Tara was just mentioning this. This, I, I love my plaid flannel shirts and I love when I find them in cool colors. So yeah, I didn't even plan this, but I do that as a simple check and I'm gonna show you that technique, it's pretty fun. And I'll show you how you could even bring it further to make it more like a plaid than just that little check. And this is what I'm doing over the rest of the painting. I know it's a little glary from the lights, but um, once it dries, you'll see. And I will go over it until it's covered as much as I like. I might want to leave it maybe a little darker around the form sometimes. In the background here, you could have a little darker around the edge, get lighter. Just play with it and have fun. It's just a vague background. I'm getting a little braver now. I'm adding a little more paint to my brush because I can see now that I can, you know, it, it works. And I'm just gonna scoop my way around the painting. And like I said, this is a fun background. It looks very brush strokey there. I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit by going a little heavier, but it's a great background when you're just at a loss as to what to put behind there. I don't think you would have the same look if you had kind of a busy street scene behind her or whatnot. And regardless, like I use a lot of, uh, reference imagery and whatnot. And you don't have to be a slave to that. If this was taken on a city street, you don't have to paint every building in the background. You can use your artistic license to, you know, edit that picture any way you want. This would even do well with just a plain solid background, smooth, all one color. You don't have to even paint this little texture. But I'm going to do it and I'm building it up a little more. I've gone a little light. Like I said, I'd rather have you start a little light and to be honest, working on this board, it does dry a little quicker and it soaks in the paint a bit more. I might have uh, put a coat of gesso on here if I thought about it. So I'm just going a little brighter. So you've got the two tones still. You've got a little dark peeking through and it's a little brighter. And I know this is a little tedious part and you could always skip through this if you're on the recording and just get your background done. But I can take a minute to tell you about me. I don't know a lot of you are followers and I know and I know you and some people are probably new. So welcome. My business is Tinker's Cart Art. I have an online presence. I'm in all of the social places. I do have a lot of classes free on YouTube. If you want to check out my YouTube channel and subscribe there, you can see how I work and see if it suits you. And like I said, there's plenty of classes there. I offer you know, every couple of months, maybe in virtual class, a uh, one-off class that you could just buy if it's something of interest. And I do have the art memberships, like I said. So there are all kinds of ways to paint with me, but but go ahead and try some free, free classes and see what you think. My free community is over on Mighty Networks. It's very much like Facebook, but you don't have the ads and the distractions and, and all the things. It's just my community. And so when I put something out, you see it. It's very private, so if you're in there posting and showing your artwork, it's not something that could end up anywhere. So if you would like to join me there, I believe I have a link in the description for the video, but I can always share it or you can, you know, DM me and I can give you any information. So that's basically our background. You can fiddle with it as much as you want. If you wanted to get a few spots that are even brighter, I just take a tiny bit of white into this color and you could do in a few places, just get it a little brighter. It's what you like the look of. 
And you know, when we're painting here on the table, and especially in, on a class, you are looking at your painting way too close. So please just get up and step back. And that's where you're going to get the information you need as to how it looks. Don't judge your painting here. Don't say, oh, gee, I just, it's awful. Look at it. I can't, no one's going to ever look at it this close. They're going to be four and five feet away. So do the same. Just step back. And I find more of my little mistakes and little things that need to be adjusted or corrected when I'm watching myself paint on the video. And that's a great tip is if you are painting and something's a little naggy of you, or, or even if it's not, hold it up in front of a mirror and or take a picture of it. And it's so telling as to what might need to be tweaked. And more times than not, I'll see it here as I'm painting it. Hi, Janet. Hello. So background is done. Now I'm going to just put this little palette aside because this is perfect if I want to touch up something later. So I'll hang on to that. And again, I'll show you the colors I'm using, but by all means, use what you like. Use whatever color shirt you like, vase. This could be solid. It could be striped. It could be the leopard spots like Dina did. Anything you want. So I just got out some black and white, Payne's gray. I really like Payne's gray. I'm not a big user of just straight black paint. If I'm painting anything black, if I'm shading black dog fur, I always use blue in there. So I like to have a little color even in the doll areas. I've got a skin tone color, pick whatever you like, burnt sienna. I've got this pretty salmon color that I'm using for her shirt. I believe it's called melon. And I've got the quinacridone uh, pink, red there, magenta. And I do love this uh, royal fuchsia, the delta, or Americana. But you know what? You could get gorgeous pinks just from your red and white. So again, you don't have to have all the fancy colors, but I do like, I just love, I'm just such an, a love in these lime greens and these, the salmony color melon. I just love that shade. And you'll see a lot of my paintings that way. And after a while, when you find colors you like and you sort of stick to them and you incorporate them, it sort of becomes part of your style and you're recognizable for that. So use what you love. Don't feel like you have to do it the way someone else did or how you think it should be done. Just use your heart and just pick out colors that you like. Minnesota too, Janet. Hello. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I've been using a lot of those colors in lots of paintings, as you might have seen. Okay, I told you how I usually go background to foreground. And so there's just a little bit of dark green peeking through the bouquet here. So I'm going to just stick that in now just because I want that behind my flowers. It's hardly noticeable. It's just a little bit of a leaf poking through here. And the rest of the roses all just overlap over each other. But if there's a little gap anywhere in between your flowers, you can certainly go in there. I really, I really want it kind of dark. And when that dries, maybe I'll put a little highlight on, but that's basically just because it's behind the roses, it's done. And let me see, I might have, I might have skimped on my background right here. I think that should come in a little more, but that's what's good about having this palette handy because you can go ahead in and do anything you need. Okay, I'm gonna put her hair in. That's behind the flowers, that's behind the leaves. So let's just put that in and I have a deep ochre or yellow. I use this color an awful lot, deep ochre. It's like a yellow ochre. It's a great kind of a muted, uh, more opaque yellow. Because I start dark and go light many times, that's why I'm gonna base that in that darker gold color. I have a little hair peeking through right here. In many of these colors, I will have to go and do a second coat. Um, but I wanna get this in in the dark. And then I'm going to mix this color with white. And that's gonna give me some good coverage on top of this. If you ever have a color, especially yellows and oranges and whatnot, they're very transparent. You could just mix a tiny bit of white with them and that will make them a little more opaque and cover better. Or for instance, if I was painting this and I painted the whole thing and I wanted, you know, I needed to paint the arms in or something, a lighter color, just base coat it back in white. Do a couple coats of white and then when you get your yellow or orange or the, or the transparent colors, you could paint it right on top. If I'm doing a night sky, and I do the whole sky and then I want to put a moon in. So what, what I do, I always paint the moon in two or three coats of white. And then when I pop the shade of yellow in that I want, it just covers beautifully. So whatever size brush works, I'm just filling in here behind the hair. 
that's going to be a finger there and a leaf. Okay. So it's kind of like color book painting right now. We're just filling in the lines. It's kind of relaxing. Once I, I really like to get all of the white of the canvas covered and then the magic starts when you start adding in your, light, your lights and darks, little sparkles, whatnot. So let me know in the comments, have you guys been painting any of the paintings yet? What's been your been your jam? Which do you like? It's, it's really an interesting challenge that Tara has put together for us because isn't it fabulous to see how people interpret things? So for instance, a little of my background got into my hair here and I know it's gonna be hard to cover as many coats of that yellow as I put on. I will just simply paint it in white right now. And then when I go back with my next coat, I'll cover like a breeze. And I'll use my pattern here just to see where the hair is. It's kind of a little bit here around the rose and around the leaf. A little bit here. And around this little leaf as well. There's a rose there on top of it. And then we've got the vase. And after all of the base coating is done, you'd be surprised how quick it goes along. So I know a lot of people hesitate to start. They want to paint. They've always wanted to try. They hesitate to start a little bit. But remember how much you can even get done in just a 45 minutes or an hour. You really can get quite a lot accomplished and it gets you started. And then it's easier for you to sit down next time and spend a little time. So if you've wanted to start painting or you just want to give it a go, don't let time stop you. I know that's one of the biggest struggles that my people, my painters have is finding time. But just a, it doesn't have to be hours. You don't have to block off hours. Block off 45 minutes every couple of days and you'll be so surprised at how much you get done. Yes, Robin, there's a tracer. It is in the um, in the feed there, and I believe it might be in my little section. I put a tracer in for an 8 by 10 and an 11 by 14. I've broken it up for you so you can print it out properly and tape it together. If you would like another size, if you want to do a 16 by 20 or something, certainly just message me or put it in the comments, and I will make one for you. And if you have trouble finding that at all, just let me know. So there we are. We just got a cut coat of the... Um, Yellow. We're going to let that dry. I'm going to put a little coat with a little white added to it next and maybe leave it just the darker ochre around the edges. But I like to just get things filled in a little bit. So why don't I just fill in just to get a coat done of her little shirt there. Um, I'm going to do the face before I do the fingers. But let's get the shirt done just because more, can more white canvas is covered up. So I am just going to put, and this is covering, this cover color covers beautifully because it being a salmon-y color like that, it has white in the mix, so it covers beautifully. And I'm going to show you a really easy, quick technique afterwards to make that little checked shirt. Then you can all paint shirts like mine. <laughs> You're welcome, Robin. If you can't find it, like I said, just let me know. It's very easy for me to make tracers and do them in different sizes. So certainly just reach out if you need anything. And I know some people, I know a lot of people have trouble get, I just want people to start because I know how much joy painting brings me. And other people that I've seen, you know, it's just taking a little time for yourself for a change, doing something creative, something that you love. And I know people sometimes are a little intimidated. They, they think, oh, well, you know, I, can't, I, I wasn't born with that. I can't draw. You don't need to have all those skills already. It, it's yes, some people are born with that. And, and um, but I think there's a lot to be said for being able to learn new skills too. I had someone, because I do proclaim that a lot because I teach in a like a very slow step-by-step -step way. And I try to make it so even if you've never, I've had many people at my classes that have never painted before and they are coming in with, well, I can't do this. You know, I'm only here because my neighbor made me come or my daughter wanted to do this and they go out and they're so shocked. And I love that. And some of them have had a love for painting and, 
one reason or another they didn't have time or just didn't believe they could do it. I love it when they say, oh, I just went and bought brushes and I'm going to paint this or that at home. I just know how, how good it is for you and what a great feeling. And even if it comes, it's something that doesn't even come out great. Does that matter? It's Isn't it kind of the experience too? So there's that. But I did have somebody say once, well, she doesn't understand that, you know, not everybody's born with, with talent. Not everybody can do that. But I have to disagree a little bit. Some people are born with all kinds of skills. There's, a, you know, the people that just can cook. They could go in the kitchen, throw whatever ingredients in the fridge are together, throw a pinch of this and that, off, off they go. They've got fabulous meals. I am, don't have that in me at all, at all. Does that mean I don't try to cook? No, it doesn't mean I need to have a, a recipe book and probably a YouTube video. And if it's step by step, I can't just throw a pinch of this or that in. I have to go exactly what they say because that's just the way I am. But it does show you that you can learn to do things if someone shows you in a nice, you know, orderly, relaxed, step by step method. I think you can learn lots of things. Can I change the oil in my car? No. Am I mechanically inclined? Do I? Can I take a take a motor apart and put it back together without really even knowing what I'm doing? Yeah, people can do that. Some of them are. But if I had to do it and I watched a YouTube video and someone showed me and I practiced and I did it a few times and I had a little maybe a, some instructions and photos to show me how, don't you think? Isn't that true, you guys? Do you feel like you can learn new skills? And if it's for something that's going to just make you happy, why not jump in whether you can draw or not? You don't have to draw. And there's no reason. No one says that's a rule. That's why I happily provide tracers, as do many other instructors, because that the painting is the fun part. Jump right in and paint. So that's my little spiel about you don't have to be know how to draw a straight line and you don't have to be born with the talent if you really have a desire to learn it. OK, so when I paint white things, I have to go from dark to light, right? Like that's my method. And if I start with white, where do I go from there? So I start even a white section with kind of a blue gray. So that's why I'm gonna fill in these white sections with a little bit of a Payne's gray and white, or you could simply put a little blue and black and some white. I'm gonna pull up more comments in case I miss anything. Okay. Sandy, the tracer is in the group in the event there, but I'll make sure it's visible. I, I posted it yesterday, I think. And I think it might be in my guide. I think we might have guides. If you have trouble finding it, let me know. And if you want a different size, certainly let me know. So I'm gonna get a little bit of my blue out as well. A little bit of ultramarine. Okay, I'm not, I'm not uh, always the best. I, I try to keep all my little caps closed so it's not all gooey and whatnot, but I don't always, so there we are. So a very bit, like a gray blue, just a, like a bit of a gray blue. And I started with blacks on the bottom, so this will be a white stripe and this will be a white stripe and a little bit peaking there. And like I said, I need to have a dark shaded area and build up to a highlight. And with white, you think, you know, it has to be white. But no, I start with a gray, gray blue. Again, because if it's just gray, it's just, I'd rather have a little color into all my sections of the painting. And like I said, I'm going to do the, the little hands afterwards. So right now I'm just painting that base in there. I'm going to thin my paint a little bit because this, like I said, this paper board is really grabbing the color and drying quick. And as I work, I'm always adding water to my paint, especially if I'm doing a detail, a little detailed line or something. I always have to have the paint thinned down. And that really is helpful if you're trying to do, you know, little tiny strokes and things. You can't do that with the heavy consistency. You have to thin that down almost like an ink cons consistency. Mary, that's exactly right. We were talking about that. It is. You build up your confidence. And you know what? Every piece is not a masterpiece. You guys see us painting. It's like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. Oh, that came out great. They don't all come out that great. I do paintings many times until I get it the way I want. But it's 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 um, it's either a success or a really good learning lesson. And like I said, just leave your paintings alone for a little while. Go back and look at them later. And you'll be surprised how they just improve on their own because you're too close when you're working and too critical. So try to be less critical, enjoy more, 
and remember you could paint right over the whole painting if you need to. So I'm just getting these little stripes in and I'm going to get a little brush because it's a little bit poking through the fingers so I want to carry that along and I'm going to make it a little darker. It's going to be darker on the two sides so I can make that a little darker even. So I can see that there's a little bit of the stripe here under the fingers there. Same thing here, a little bit showing through on this little pinky finger there and the tiny bit here, just a little bit there. And that's our edge. And I think I will get the highlighting and shading on those before I do the darker stripe because that way I can even them right up if I need to. So what's gonna happen is we're going to have it darker on the edges of the vase, lighter in the middle. So I think I will go and get a little bit darker just on those edges. And I'm gonna take just a little more of that Payne's Gray. I'm just gonna get it a little darker because I can dry brush a lighter color over it. And how I'm doing that is I'm using a flat brush and I've loaded just a little of the dark on one side. I don't wanna have a big brush load. So if I just kind of go with that dark paint to where I want it, I can kind of just brush it in. This is what I meant when I kind of did more of like a little wash, although that yeah, it has dried, so it's more of a wash. I'm just picking up the little dark I made with the corner of my square brush. And I'm just going to use the dark side of my brush towards where I want the shadow. And actually there'll be a little shadow, of course, in between the fingers there and probably right here. And with those one strokes, I really get a nice blend. I'm gonna start at the edge and maybe just bring it in. Same thing on this side, I'm just gonna flip the brush over. I might have to reload it now. Just I'm just scooping it in the corner of the brush to the dark. I'm just bringing it in. And then on the corner here, same thing. Her, her little finger's getting a little misshapen, but we can do a little surgery and fix that. So already, just from the distance, doesn't already look like it has some shape. It's darker on the sides there. And then I'm gonna get lighter in the middle. I'm gonna rinse the brush off just to get the dark paint out, but always, always try to get all the water off your brush there. Straight white, I'm gonna try now. And then I'm going to be able to see. If it's not bright enough, I'll do a few coats. If it um, needs more dark when that dries, I could you know, put that in there. But I want it brighter in the, the sections there, right in the front. And if I work kind of quick, I can smooth that out, kind of using the dry brush now. And I'm gonna just soften it around the sides here. Same here, I'm just gonna to try to do it quick before it dries. And I can already see that that white is sinking right into that blue. I'll do another coat or as many coats as I need to get it just the brightest right in the middle there. And then you can go back and forth as much as you need to. You could go back and get it darker, lighter, move that color around. But basically you want the darks where they are and a little bit of bright in the middle here. I have a lot of strokes in my um, stripes there because I really went back and forth quite a bit. When I got out here and this was dry, I might go right into the blue that I used and get it a little bit um, to blend just to like re-wet the couple of colors. But I do have to remember that this is really a white stripe. So I may go and just back and forth while the colors are a little wet, sort of blending them. And again, looking at it this close, it doesn't look great. But again, no one's looking at it this close. They're gonna look at it from afar. And even from there on the video, you can see how it has taken some, some roundness. I'm gonna let it dry and then touch up some really white highlights just in the middle. But now I'm gonna go and do that dark um, stripe, which is black. But again, I can't just, um, you know, I still want to go from dark to light. So I am getting, I'm gonna do it dark, but then I'm going to dry brush a lighter blue just to give me that roundness. Is the stripe actually light blue? No, but when it's a sh when there's a shine on it or a highlight, I always highlight black with a light blue of different sorts. So I'm gonna go right in there with maybe just Payne's Gray, a little black because the Payne's Gray looks like it's a little streaky. So I'm gonna just do a little of both just so I have some blue in that black and it's just not straight black. And you can use whatever brush. I sometimes get like a big stripe with this thick brush and then I'll go with my small brush and do my edges. And so we have that big section of dark and I'll straighten out with a small brush and we've got this other stripe under here. 
And I think I will just go to a smaller brush now. It's just easier for me to control the paint. Use whatever brushes work for you, rounds, flats, filberts. I use a little bit of everything but I want you to use what you're comfortable with. So I, I never say there's any hard and fast rules about what you must do or use. I'm thinning the paint down because I wanna get a nice smooth line across here, which I couldn't do if the, if the paint was the consistency it is on my palette now. So it's really watered down and I can get a nice smooth line there. Just gonna go around the hands. I'm gonna be careful around the hands because that color that's going on top is going to be a bit lighter and I want it to cover. And so I'm trying to keep away from them. But remember, if we hit them, what do we do? We just put a little white over it and that will give us a nice base to put our light color on. It's a little brush, you could go bigger probably. It's a little tedious, but I'd rather be able to put it exactly where I want it. And I'm always turning my painting upside down and sideways just to get at the different areas I'm trying to get at. Okay, then we got these little fingers to go around best we can. Oh, Nancy, thanks. Yeah, I've I just been in, you know, that teal phase still. It is a fun color. It's that jewel green. It's kind of a tealy green. I think on this one, I might have used more of a bit of a blue tone to it. You can adjust those colors any which way. How many people want to try this painting? I don't know if anybody's painting along right now. Sometimes people like to watch first. That's the way I generally like to watch the video first and then jump in and, uh, next time. So if you're watching now and you go to watch the replay, you could skip through some of this little um, base coating bits, just knowing where you're putting your colors. And I'm, I'm constantly adding little bits of water because it just dries out too much. And I just want a nice line. And I do use the painting here as a reference. You have the photograph you could use as a reference. Just getting around the fingers and things here. I know that this is kind of uh, that line there. I may even have to do a little bit more of the light blue, but we'll see. I think we can put this stripe there. If you can see, but my paint is very thin and it's gliding along nicely that way. Okay, let me just get this line. I'm trying to do this without putting my hand in the wet paint or my shirt sleeve, which is are you like me? Every sleeve has a little paint on it somewhere. Michelle. Oh, good. I can't wait to see yours. Oh, Michelle, you have your, your class tonight, I think, Thursday, right? So I'm wishing you luck with that, and that should be a fun night. You have to let me know how it all goes. Okay, there's little fingers over here. I can't really see the sketch too well, but I'm going to just go by the picture here. I've got this finger, then around this finger. And that's a bit of the finger underneath the blossom. Let's see, how many fingers do we have? One, two, three, four. So the leaf is going to come down here. I got it. It's just a little piece here that's coming through. And I can play around with that later if I need to. I see a little piece of the finger I did touch with that dark, so I'm just going to dab a little white on it just to make it easier when I go to paint the flesh color. I think this finger got a little big, so I'm going to just touch it up with a little of the dark. I think it just grew a little bit, so let's just give it a little bit of a shape there. Alrighty. Now the top one is just hidden under those Roses, and the roses are going to be a fun, quick little way to make flowers. I think that will be kind of fun for everyone. All right, so this is behind the vase. There's going to be a leaf that comes out here somewhere that's going to cover here, so I don't really need to do too much there. And I 
I can't wait to see all of the paintings when the challenge is done of all these very similar tracers with so many different takes on them. And I hope you guys just take the tracer yourself and do your own thing and show us. That would be great to see. It doesn't have to even be from the class or anything, just one that you did any way you like. You could change the flowers and make them daisies or daffodils or anything. And we did have a teeny tiny bit of the white stripe showing under those roses. So I'm going to go and just put that in a little more, fill it in with a light blue and then maybe just, it's gonna be dark up there under, it's a shadow so it's dark under there. So let's just fill that in a little bit just so we don't have the white of the canvas showing here. So it's just a little stripe here and it will be just pretty gray because it's underneath that flowers would be casting that shadow down there. And now I might go back because my white stripe is dry. I might want to give it just a little bit of a white highlight in the middle again, because like I said, the white sort of sometimes just kind of sinks in. I'm just brightening up. You can see it brighten up just a teensy bit. That dark color covered pretty well. Um, on my end, I can see a little bit of streakiness. So I'm going to quickly just give a little bit of a dark on this edge, especially where the shadow would be. I might not worry too much about the middle. I'm going to have some highlights there of light blue, but it would be not streaky under here where again, the shadow is cast, the edge is darker and around these little fingers too, just a little bit darker. Shape that finger a little bit and looking a little squarish. Okay, great. So what I highlight with, because I'm going dark to light, and this is black, so I can't get it too bright, but I wanna do some dark blue and maybe a little bit of light blue tonight. Uh, oh, okay, cool. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's. Okay. Oops, my little, this little brush comes apart and I don't know, it's not like it's supposed to and I don't know the reason why, maybe to put different tips on, I don't know. Let's get a blue to put in here. So I don't wanna go as light as this because it's gonna be too bright. So I need, I'm gonna get a little Payne's gray, a little white, I want not too bright blue, so a little Payne's gray. And again, I'm gonna do it lightly. I've, I've patted off my paint on a paper towel. I don't wanna paint on here with a big bright bit of color, but I'll start light and I can build it up. And that light is kind of going just in the middle. I know you can't see it on camera very well. Let me, I'm gonna lighten it up a little more just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm getting that highlight there, but I don't want it to be abrupt and be a blob. So I'm drying off my brush and I'm just softening it. So it's really dry brushy out here, just softening it. And that's just um, same thing for each of these little sections. Put it on in the middle. And then you can just get the br brush a little drier and then just, it's almost like feathering it. It's like very light touch. If it's too stiff looking and not blended, you can always dry off your brush, take a little of the black and then while they're both wet, blend them in. So that's those couple ways I was telling you about giving highlights and shadows. Sometimes it's wet and wet, and sometimes it's just dry brushed on top. And that needs a little more pigment in it. It's still wet. I'm gonna dry my brush and just sort of feather it. And I want it to be like this shape because then I can get a little brighter just in the very center. So I might get a little bit brighter in this, just the front there, just a little bit. Slightly, it's not, it's not white, it's a light blue. Just put that in the middle there. Same here, it's a little wet. The paint's a little wet, so I'm sort of kind of, I'm gonna go back and do that a little bit. That, that black is kind of dragging in there, but you get the idea and, and we'll go back. I have a little bit of line work I do on those and I'm gonna brighten them up a bit, but let us just put on our flesh colored. What I'm trying to do is get things all covered. Then we'll do the leaves. Actually, we'll finish the hair. We'll do the hair because it's under. We'll do the leaves on top. And then I'm going to show you the techniques for the ro uh, roses 
fun little squiggly hairs on her hairdo. And then we're going to do some shading and then the, the uh, check on there. Okay, so let me get a little brush here. I'm gonna do the hands. I'm gonna use a little square brush, whatever you want. You, I might go back in with my detail, of course, to get the little shapes I need to. But for now, I'm just gonna get them in. Now it's very bright. We are going to shade with that burnt sienna, but let's just get the pigment, the color in there. If it gets a little out of shape, which that one just did, I could just go back in with a liner brush in my black and just touch it up. We don't want to do too much on the hands to call too much of attention to them. You know, hands are a little tricky sometimes. So a little shading, maybe some highlights on the top of the fingers. I do a little bit of a light uh, color fingernails kind of fun, but we're not going to get too, too wrapped up in the hands. But it's kind of nice that we're not having to paint a face. This is looking very bright to me, this melon color. It's a little different than what I used on my original. I think that was more pinky. But I, I do love the, the shade against that background, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to change it. What's fun about doing these ladies with the bouquets, because you could have more of the body showing, and you could do fun little uh you know, a cute little skirt, and you don't have to have legs or anything, but you can start with the skirt and then the top or a cute t-shirt or something. It gives you some uh, freedom to paint some different clothing patterns or little designs or plaids or florals or whatnot. Kind of fun. So for now, one coat of this. It's covering pretty well. I might give it a quick coat in places when that's dry. And then I'm going to show you how I shade and highlight just lightly. And then the little finger nails, like I said. And it looks like I might have missed a teeny bit of the teal under here. So I have my background color still here. And just so I don't have a little bit of white canvas showing, I'm just going to scooch that in there. While we're waiting for the hands to dry, let's go into the hair. So what I said I was going to do is make it my dark here. And now I am going to get a little lighter shade. So it's just that deep ochre with a little bit of white added. Just a little tab of white. And this time I, I am going to stroke it right down because the hair's going in that direction. So I am going to just do this second coat, which is covering beautifully, straight down. And it's just simply that deep ochre and a little white. And I'm going to put a little lighter towards the outside edge. So I'll fill this all in. Make sure you can see it with my little face there. If there's ever a point where you're not seeing something enough, let me know. So I don't look up often enough, maybe. Oh, Michelle, I know. It was just a, because it was a little different than what I used. I thought, oh, maybe I should adjust it. But you know what? Let's just leave it as a happy accident. And so now because it's wet on wet, I can take just, all I do is wipe the yellow off my brush. I'm going to take, pick up some clean white. It's going to mix a little with the yellow, so that's fine. But along this edge, I just want it a little lighter out there. And so I'll just dry my brush off now and just soften it. And I have a lot of little squiggly hairs coming down afterwards, so you mightn't see it that much, but just a little bit so it's lighter on the edge. And same on the other side, a little bit of light with that. Yeah, the hands are intimidating for me too, even, but the, the less is more. And if you don't get, you know, I'm not trying to do knuckles and creases and all that. And if you, oh, look at, I think I smudged my black here, but that's okay. Um, the less is more. You could almost get away with just blocking them in with just the color and having it not as detailed with shading and highlight. You could have it just blocked in, but I'd like to add, I always have to add my highlights and my shading. 
I don't know why. I just always add a little bit extra to everything. So less than like a, an illustration that's just blocky kind of, it's going to have a little bit, a little bit more realistic look. Okay, so now I'm just getting that whole area of her hair wet, which is going to make it so much easier for me to go with wiping off my brush now, taking up some fresh white, and just doing that edge. So I just lay the stripe in of the light. I'm working fast enough so that it won't dry before I need to blend. And then I just dry off the brush, use that dry brush to just soften that. And I don't believe, I didn't do it darker in here because we're really not going to see it, but you could almost have had a little shadow straight back with just the color if you needed to have a little darker back in. I don't know if we really need it, only because we're going to cover it with a lot of little squiggly lines for her curly hair, but that's just as easy to show you how to put a little shadow in there if you needed to. Now I'm going to use my liner brush because I love the way I can get a nice long stroke with that. They're great because when you load it with color, watered down paint, more like ink, you can get long lines without stopping, which is the idea of a liner, like you're doing the veins of our leaves later or different pinstriping. And you can get, without having to keep reloading, you have a nice long line, a lot of paint in that brush is held in there. And uh, I'm gonna thin down my paint. And I think I will just get some um, dark squiggles first. So I'm going to thin down just the gold deep ochre. And that's the problem. A lot of people say, I can't paint fine lines. Fine lines are too hard. Part of it is the brush, the pressure of the brush, and the consistency of the paint. If you've got even a liner brush and the paint is heavy and you're doing this nice, broad, you know, straight line, if it's not um, consistency of, of ink and water, it's going to drag and skip. And so what you're going to do is you're going to press down harder to try to get it to cover and you press down harder and then you got that bumpy line as opposed to just a nice thin line consistent. Keep it thin. You don't want it dripping, but you will get the hang of the consistency after a while. So I'm getting that thin down, just the ochre color. And this is all I'm going to do is just do these little squiggly. Some, sometimes they go right down. Can you see I'm going over what I painted because I want them to be like little stray squiggly hairs hanging out. And I'm also going to go right over what I painted. Now this is not that much darker but it gives it some texture. You can go right out over the end a little bit. And the same thing over here. So I start out beyond the hair that I had. I like to see the little background peeking through. And then you could just put these little squiggly ones that are just kind of Little, I don't want to say split ends, but you know, like little flyaway pieces. And then I'm going to do some that are a lighter yellow, and I'm going to do some that are white. So now I'll just take the same brush, but dip it into some white to just to lighten up the shade I'm using. Thinning it down, of course, every few, when I reload the brush, I add a few drops of water. So I'm building it up lighter and lighter. That looks white on, on camera, but it's really a light yellow. I'll do some white ones and I'm just squiggling it. And it's kind of fun. It's just giving it kind of a whimsical look, I guess. And I'll do some in white. That will really pop. You could do as few or as many as you like the look of. It's no set rule. Don't you love all this no rule stuff? Hey, Jamie. Oh, I wouldn't mind. I was outside myself walking. It's beautiful here today, so I don't blame you for being outside. And besides, this is so great because the replays, right? So, you know, you can just pop in and pop out and then sit down to paint later. And I can't wait to see how you interpret the painting. It's um, so fun. So just a few squiggles of white, some flyaways. You could have it really super curly. You could do curly cues. I'm just doing like little waves. You could have straight hair and just put nice straight lines. You can do different color. You want to make it look like, you know, your daughter or your granddaughter. And you want to make really curls or straight or, like I said, make it your own.
I think I dragged a little bit of bright yellow in there, but that's okay too. That's how things happen. That's how you discover like, oh, the, the bright yellow. Oh, I didn't have that in my other one, but look at it. It's kind of cool. Actually, it's very cool. Let's just throw some of that in. Alrighty. I'm going to keep going back and adding some highlights to this. I know when I did the original, it just needed more oomph. And so I will just, every time I think of it, get a little heavier white because I want that to, to be so bright right in that middle. So I'll just keep adding that. I don't know if it needs to be too much lighter on the bottom, but I might just go a scooch. That's a little bright. Looks good on the camera, though. Just want it a little lighter there in the middle there. Okay. A quick little coat of uh, flesh color on her hands again <clears throat> because it's a little streaky. So I'm just going to, again, like I did in the background, I'm not going to go into every nook and cranny. I'm just going to kind of get in there. And if I see it streaky, I'm just going to put a quick little coat on there. And then I'm going to show you how to shade it. And I think I might do wet and wet, so I'm going to have to re-wet some of that color anyway. But I'm just going to get a quick little pass on these fingers with another coat of flesh color. And let's see, this one needs to bend that way a little bit. So I'm going to use Burnt Sienna, the red-brown, to shade. And I'm going to almost mix maybe a little bit with some of my flesh color because I don't want it to be too brown. I want it to be a, a nice blend, not too much. And I'm going to have a shadow along the sleeve there. And I guess it didn't show up that much, so now I'm going to go darker. So that's why I said do it subtly and very light because you can always go darker. And the same over here. I'm going to do it there. It's a little wet still, but I'm going to try to um, – I'm just going to get a little bigger brush, dry it off, use it to blend. I don't want it to stay as a line, but that looks like a nice blend. And again, it tell, it's very telling when I look at it from – the video because it looks still a little bit much a little bit of a harsh line i just take a little flesh if i need to and just soften that and it's got that little shadow across the bottom there and then just look at your look at your picture and you'll see it's just sh a shadow on the bottom side of each finger so i'm going to load my brush with the flesh color. Because the paint's dry and I want to kind of do a wet and wet, I'm loading my brush just with the flesh. I'm going to dip the tiniest, tiniest bit of the corner into the burnt sienna and I'm going to pat it down. It's an easy way to do. It's like a double loaded brush. It's an easy way to do um, a shading stroke. So I've got flesh on my brush and just a little bit of burnt sienna and I pat it out first a little to blend it. It's just the underside of the fingers. Just follow the shape. Follow the shape. I'm going to get a little more on my brush. So it's the underside of the finger that is the shading. I want to hold it up real close for you to see in a minute how simple it can be. The way the fingers are bent, there's just a little bit. This little finger comes down. And it's this is kind of like bent, so it's just got a little shadow under here. I'm going to still with the cor just the corner of my brush, I'm just laying in, and by doing it with the corner and letting it blend into the flesh on the brush, it's not a harsh line. You could paint a line in and then go back and soften it, but I am going to leave that extra bright for you to see, and I'm going to soften it. So you can see it's a very heavy line, but you can see how I've taken the brush with the, on the left-hand side of my brush is the burnt sienna, and I'm just going down. I'm doing it a little dark just to exaggerate so you can see. And because there's flesh on the brush and just burnt sienna on the corner, it's blending as I go. I'll dry that brush off, and I think I can just do with the softness of the brush. See how I'm softening that shadow so it's not quite so stark? And then I'm going to put a little white highlight. So that'll that'll be what I do for that hand. Same thing over here. This is how we did it again. Just so a little square brush. All the brushes just loaded in flesh. I'm going to just dip the corner, the very corner, in to the burnt sienna and just pat it down. It just gives me a soft blend. Same thing, just the bottom side of the fingers. So I'm just going to go to the bottom side of the finger. Oops, no, I just did it the wrong side there. Let's scooch that away. Bottom side. And just keep reloading as you need to. I didn't have much paint on my brushes there. 
bottom side here, bottom side. Then I'm going to turn it around, look and see exactly where that little shadow is under the knuckle, kind of. So for now, it's just that. And then I know I need to shade this little, this finger comes kind of down over this. So there's a little shadow behind there. This one is coming down more too. And right around this little pinky is kind of, because it's bent like this, it's it's not the whole thing is stretched out. It's got a little shadow. And if you do the shadow here, it sort of makes it look like it's that bent. Um, and let's see, I'm going to put the, the white on. Then you can really see where that darks and lights go. And again, this is very just... You don't need to get real detailed. I don't want to make it sound like it's too detailed because you really just need to paint it in a little shadow on the underside, basically is what you need. And then I'm going to do the same thing only when some white. So I'm going to reload my brush again with the flesh color and then just take a little white on the corner. A couple of ways you can do it. You could certainly do lay on the flesh color and then with a fine liner brush, put in your darker light and smudge it with this brush. I'm just trying to save time and I've had a lot of practice with the double loading and that's something you could practice. Just take a big square brush, load it with the color, put corner in a dark or a light and pat it out. It's just something that you practice and, and it will come. And uh, sometimes we, we did a Zoom one night in my membership and we just practiced brush strokes all night. We were gonna do double loading flowers and leaves and, and all this, but we really just started with the brush stroke practice and it was relaxing and everybody just loved it because it was just soothing and relaxing and practicing. So the little light shade is going to go on the opposite side of the finger. So you're just going to get a little white. Can you see I'm starting to put that little light on there? I know it's very glary, but get it on there and then look at it. And then you can always soften it. This has got a shadow under the pinky. So I'm giving it a little highlight right there. Wherever I'm going pretty much up against the, the dark and giving it highlights. This part of the hand, I think, is just a little blah. So let's give that a little hand highlight there, too. And a little highlight in the middle kind of gives it form and it's and it's kind of nice to have a little bit of form. Loading it back in with flesh, dipping it into a little white. Top of the fingers over here. And I might go right down that whole front top of the hand. This is going down like that. And this bit here. And then you put the little fingernails on and it's, you know, subtle enough. It's all you really need, a little white maybe here. So take a, this, this is still a little dark. I did it dark so you could see it, but it's kind of a little bothering me a little bit. I'm going to soften it a bit. So they're not, you stand far, far away and they look, oh, look at those detailed little hands. They're really not. And for little um, fingernails, I just take basically white, but I maybe put a little flesh in it. I don't want them to look like they're painted white. It's almost like a little clear. So I'm taking just some white, a little bit of that uh, flesh color mixes in, that's fine. And it's just, you see just the top of a little fingernail here. Just look at your picture, the top of one here. I think I did a shadow around them. So I think I will do that. I'll show it to you in, in step by step. So I'm gonna show you the little white, barely white. Like I said, it's mixed with some flesh color. And I'm going to hold it up so you can see it once I get that shaped a little bit. It's just a little fingernail shape. It's barely there, but can you see there's just a little bit lighter? And to finish it off, I'm just going to rinse my brush. I'm going to do a little tiny bit of a wash of the burnt sienna. Take a little bit aside, get it really thin. I don't want a harsh line around the fingernail. It's just a little shadow. So it's just watered down burnt sienna. And I'm just going down the side and along the bottom. And I know some of these seem like little picky details, but just adding a little bit like something like this just finishes it off with enough attention to detail, but not too much. And it's a wash. It's just really watered down burnt sienna. Just going around the side and the bottom.
Can you see it's just standing out a little more now because of that washy outline? And then from a distance, it reads just as what you need it to. So let's do our leaves and then we'll do the roses. And, I'm, and I'll show you this plaid last. So again, I don't want to put it on there now and get my hand in it. And I did smudge something over here. So I'm just going to, you know, I love having this beside me here so I can touch up all my little boo boos. Alrighty. Leaves, because they are behind the flowers pretty much. And they're kind of a little bit of a whimsical leaf. I just sort of fill them in with some color. Can you see the right hand sides are all a darker green? I put kind of a lime green here and there and I outline them a little bit with this white outline like I did for the hair and a little bit around the flowers. So right now we just want to paint them in and then I give them little dashes here and there sometimes of a teal to bring in the color of the background. I do like to bring some of the colors in the painting together to make it cohesive. So you'll see I'll put some of this color in the flowers. The hair color will be in the roses. I might dab a little yellow onto some leaves. It sort of just ties everything together. So leaves, let's just find a green, some sort of a middle shade of green. And I do love my phthalo green mixed with primary yellow. You can get any shade of green you want. So I think I'm gonna go a little darker and I'm just gonna paint them in for now. And they're just really roughly this little leaf shape. And because they're on top of the hair, it's perfect now, I could just go right along. That brush is getting a little raggedy to do it with. So let me go to a smaller one. So wherever you see a leaf, this leaf comes down over the finger a little bit. So that kind of hides that if you don't love the finger there. And again, use a green that you have that you like, but I am just going to, you know, just put them in in this color for now and we'll adjust it later. So I'm just gonna put them in wherever there's a leaf. And it's streaky still, so I might go back and just a little swipe in the middle if I need to. And let's see, and some of these leaves are kind of on top of the flower. So let me do the ones that I can find that are coming out from underneath. And those last few on top, we will do after the roses. But I like to go from background to foreground. So anything that's behind the roses now and on top of everything else is what we are looking for. And it looks like here, I probably should have had this little bit as hair color. Another great thing, acrylics, you can just, you know, fix things as you go. These two leaves are on top of the roses, but these guys up here are coming out from behind. And we've got a bunch here. One little one sticking up from here. And I know on top of the teal, it's hard to see them right now, but we're going to lighten them up and outline them in white and put a little darker side too, so they'll be fine. And we have this one. I think I'm going to improvise because these don't look a whole lot like the tracer. So we're just going to improvise. We'll put a big leaf there. Okay, we have one over here poking out. And I will go a little darker with almost a black green in places for a shadow on one side and say one like this is coming out from under the roses. I will have it dark there where the shadow would be cast from the roses. There is some over here on top of the hair. And we're kind of just finding their place by putting them in, in this green for now. And there was one actually sticking out here. It is going, I'm going to just go with a little white because it's just going to help it sh the, the, the uh, second coat show up. Got a big leaf over here and it might be all we have to do for now. Let's see. Now we can do some of those fun roses, which are again, again dark to light. I think that is it. We did these little guys that are peeking from behind. We could put a little more of that green on top. Two leaves here for later. The rest we've got in. I'm going to make these a little closer because there is a little vine that's going to connect these. So I need to have them a little closer to touch that little vein. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. If anyone has to hop off, you know, the recording is going to be here. I know it's um, a little bit of a complicated painting, but it's not going to be much longer. These little roses are pretty quick, kind of like um, just fun strokes. I did some pink and I did some kind of the salmony ochre color underneath and then with uh, lighter shades building up to white after. And then they all have a little dark maroon center. So I'm going to just get the color on there for now. So for instance, on those white roses, what was kind of whitish, they are started with, let's see, this is one here. I just want to get, this was one here, but it's kind of peeking out from behind. They kind of have a little bumpy edge. And I'm just taking the golden ochre and some white, and I'm just doing that just to base those in. That's going to be our white roses. I'm mixing on the palette so it's not a perfect shade. I want sometimes to be lighter, sometimes darker. If I mixed up a little pile of that perfect color, it would be a little blah. So I just mix as I go. This little guy here is going to be got a little water drop on my brush there. Okay, so that's going to be a white one there. And this one in front here as well. I'm just going to base them in to start. Then I will do the ones that are in back first and the ones sort of to the front last to get the nice strokes on top of each other. But for now, I'm just kind of placing them where they go. And I have one more of that shade right here. And again, like I said, it could be darker, it could be lighter. This is just the underpainting of them. I like a little bit of that peachy color in there. I might just put a little of that in here and there for now. It's gonna get a little bit of pink too. A lot of colors for what basically is a white rose. Okay, I might do a little pink, a little pink of that mixed. I'm just putting it here and there, I want it to be random. So now our pink ones, I'm going to use the darker pink first and I am going to just get the shape in. Uh, I can go a little deeper than that if I wanted to. Let's just put a little quinacridone in there. Yeah, get it a little deeper to start. This one is tucked behind these white ones, but on top of these leaves. So I'll just do that and that. Again, we're just sort of placing them in. This one is under these leaves. I'm going to leave a little bit to show where the leaf is. This is going to be tucked behind, but on top of the white one. This little guy is underneath. This one is underneath. Let's see. Let's get this in here. I'm just dabbing in my pink into that darker maroon color. And you are pink as well underneath so i'm just kind of going around what i painted for the yellow and you are a nice big pink one too but on the same layer as that guy and okay okay so that's basically where they're going to go but i want to have a lot of strokes on top and I can even start now if I take, because those are wet, go right into just white, hoping to drag some of that wet pink around. And they're just going to be made by just following the shape of the petals, kind of, you know, roses are just kind of layered. And I'm just, with white, just doing little strokes like that around to start. And I'm going into white because I know the pink is a little wet. That's, this is a little dry, still coming out as pink. If it was too stark white, I would just add pink to it. If it's one that goes out over what's behind it, I can make some strokes that go out over the edge. And just keeping in mind that shape, this shape of that rose, like outside petals, and then they sort of just cut in, 
kind of almost spirals in. Sometimes I make them the strokes a little bit more uh, geometric, like this way and squared off almost. Can you see how those are a little more square kind of a stroke? Start on the outside edge. And then I do those little square strokes in the middle because you could almost, how the rose would be, you'd get a petal and it would tuck into another petal and it would tuck in. That gives that little illusion of the tucking. It's getting a little whiter as that pink base coat is drying. So I'm going to just mix a little more pink into, because I want to end up with a bright white, some bright white petals. But if they're not pink and dark underneath, the white is not going to show. So I'm going back, adding a little pink to the white now that this is sort of drying. It will really pop when we get the light after. And even from there, from a distance, they're starting to take on the rose shape. I want to get some of the colors from my painting in, so I think I'll go with this color from the shirt. Maybe a little pink with that. And I'm going to put a little bit of that into just here and there, just stroke here and there and then leave. Don't analyze it. Don't say, oh, I have it here but not there. Just do some strokes without thinking about it. You just want a little in there. I did a lot of layers on these till I got the look I liked. All right, I'm gonna do all the pink ones and finish them and then go to the white. But I do like to add some of the colors in and I think I've got them all there. I want a little bit darker even in some places. So I'm gonna get my red out. Just a, my only red I use, the only red I use for everything is just the Tuscan red, the American. I, that covers me for everything. I make my own maroons. I cannot find a maroon or an alizarin in the deco art that is dark and deep enough. So I just use red with a little bit of black and it makes a beautiful maroon. I just wanna get a little bit darker, more of a maroon in some places and also the centers are gonna be that color too. So I might wanna just kind of go in and can you see I am using a sometimes a little curved stroke but a lot of times that sort of geometric stroke. Throw them in here and there. Don't look at it too much. Sometimes it could be brighter red. Sometimes it could be a little more maroon. I have a little red by itself on my palette and I've got a little bit mixed with a tiny scooch of black just to give you that deep. Now I need to put the real dark centers in which are gonna be a darker maroon. So I'm gonna take a good bit of black into my red And in the center, you just got a little bit of a maroon, a dark maroon. Oh, it's hard to see on there, isn't it? It's not really, there you go. So it's just a little, in the middle, a dark center. We'll put some little yellow dots in there and white dots after, but that's the center. So now think of it as a rose, it's that little ball, it's the center and these petals are just layered, layered around them and on top. Yes, there is a replay, so do not even worry. It'll be up on the page, um, and you can watch it anytime. So don't worry. If you have trouble finding it, certainly just send me a message, and I'll make sure you're in the right place. Oh, Sandy, thank you for the kind words. Thank you. That's very nice. Yeah, it's, it is the internet sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to go and do <coughs> more of those little strokes and a little bit more shades of pink, working up to some white. And afterwards, when we do some touches of white everywhere, we're going to add a little bit more something, something to them. So it's fun. You can, have, you can do any sorts of strokes. Some of them are curvy like I was doing, and some are sort of square and tucked in. And let's see, I might go to a smaller brush. I'm going to try it. If not, I'll go back to my big one. So now you can see I've got a really bright pink back there, lighter pinks, but not super light yet. So let's go a little lighter. So I'm gonna go for a shade that's just a little lighter. I won't know what it is till I get it on there. And when I get it on there, if it's too light, light or dark, then I just adjust. So sometimes if it's out, you know, this little flower is on top there, the leaf a little bit. So I could go right out on top a little bit. You see, I'm kind of doing little curvy strokes and I can certainly do a little tucked in stroke. And I could go from white into pink and just get different shades. Just build it up, have some, they don't have to all be the same shade. Bring them out over. Just have fun with them. And when we end up with the white afterwards, they'll really pop out. See, they're coming together now.
They are sort of all going circling around the center though, whether they're curvy or they're tucked. And now I'm just trying to get different shades. I'm gonna get just a little lighter as I go. I think I will get, let me get a little fresh white out because that paint has got a lot of uh, pink in it now. And I'm just gonna get some fresh white. I'm gonna just wipe my brush off and do some in white. Now it probably won't be solid and straight white because it's on top of everything, but I'm just gonna build it up. So again, sometimes you could have little tiny strokes, it could be big strokes. And I just build it up till I like the look. Stand back, see what you think, and go with that. Sometimes I can, I might put a little of the peach color in there again. If it gets just a little bit too pink, I could do a little of that. And let's leave that for now and go to do the white ones. Then we'll add some little strokes, like I said, of white, little squiggly lines and our little dots in the middle. So these I know are weird color for white, but I really wanna put the white on top and have some of that color show through. And the white is transparent enough sometimes to do that. So I think I will start, let's just try it with the white on top there and see what happens. White with some water so it's thinned down a little bit. My white is very thick, so I need to thin it down anyway. Same strokes around the edge. And then some could be kind of tucked in. Almost like spirals. And I build it up from the darker shades. Even when we're talking white rose, these aren't super dark shades, but they're darker. The yellow and the peach, a little bit of pink is darker. And I am thinning it down because, like I said, my white paint is very... Um, thick but I like it when it's thinned down and it's almost like a little glaze on top I can see through it and then when I get even stronger heavier white it's almost another layer there so I do like it when it's a little transparent I'm gonna do the centers the same way as these guys afterwards go right out over things if you can especially if these are layering on top of these I'm even taking some to the other roses as I go so they're building up. I know it's a little glary and hard to see, but you can see what I'm doing there. You can see some of those white little um, strokes are transparent, which is nice because it just builds it up. It makes it really kind of a cool look. I'm going to get a few darker pinks in there. I've lost some of that. I want it to be a little bit brighter pinks here and there and then layer some more white on top. I just need a few, a few darker strokes just for some contrast. That's gonna get covered up a little bit, but I just like that look. Um, just a little heavier in there in some places. Could even do the same thing with the salmon color. My paint's all been out a little bit, so it's a little thicker, so feel free to just add little bits of water. And now I'm gonna go, I think I'll go to the bigger brush, heavier paint, white, get that brush dried off. I don't want any water in it. And then I'm gonna have some nice big bold strokes. And again, it's a matter of standing back, looking at your painting. Don't compare it to mine. Let's not compare everything and say, oh, it's not exactly like yours. I don't want you to worry about it looking exactly like mine because you know what? This painting is not gonna look anything like this painting, really. It's gonna be very different and I can't get it to look exactly like mine either. So that's not the goal. The goal is to stand back, look at it, and do you like the way it looks? And a lot of times that takes a day or two. Somehow the it, it somehow they just improve with age. Honestly, I've gone to bed with paintings that I'm convinced I'm getting up in the morning and redoing. And then when I do, it's like, oh, wait, that's not so bad. So give yourself a little break. And I'm going to go back now. And it looks like the darks and the lights are very different. I want it to be a little similar tone. So I'm going to go back and lighten these guys up more. I think I might even do the same thing. Little white paint, little transparent because of the water in the brush and bigger strokes. I don't want to lose my pink. I don't want them both of them to look the same shade, but I want them to be a little bit more on the same tone. And you can see it is coming now. Yep. Yeah. I'm only going to do this, then we're going to do the centers of the 
they call them white roses, but you know, they're a little peachy. Okay, let's get those dark centers in there. Again, it's just the maroon. It's a red with some black mixed. I just have tried and tried to get any kind of maroon, um, and I can never get one that's dark enough. So I just make my own. Now, some of these centers are going to have a little bit covered up with some strokes after because they're not all just the big centers. They don't want to look like eyeballs sticking out. I want to obscure some of them. I don't want to do that till it's dry. So why don't I go ahead and get some of my darks on my leaves while we let that sit a minute. So I just want to mix up a darker green. So I'm taking that green we mixed. We had a nice bright green here. I'm going to add a little blue and black to it, make it dark. I want a really dark shade for where the shadows are being cast on any of the leaves. And to make it easy, I could just, actually, let's paint this one on while we're here. So that's the dark. The left-hand side of these leaves are going to be dark. We're just going to use that as a little rule. So a little bit of our green with some black. If one thing is under another, it's a little dark, so it's a little dark there. So I'm going down the left-hand side as a rule on my leaves. And I want that nice and dark so you can actually see it. So I went down the left-hand side of all the leaves with my dark. But if something's underneath something, so that rose is on top of that, so I'm putting a little shadow on that leaf uh, here. So the, going just down the sides, I'm not worried about even blending them yet. That's These uh, leaves are under those roses, so let's give them a nice dark shadow. And same thing. And because we have these guys in the middle, we might dab a little dark in there. This little guy is going to be dark because that's under the shadow of the flower. And we'll see the left, right? Left hand side is dark. No, yeah, left. Okay. Would it be the end of the world if I did it wrong? No, no one's going to notice. But again, this little rose is over, so I'm going to give that a shadow there. This is all in shadow back here. It's under all that. Same here, very dark back there, behind that rose, a very dark little leaf. Dry off my brush, go into my brighter green again, just to get back in the center because it will just blend a little bit if we need to. I can just soften a little green here and there. I love the way um, the yellow, the primary yellow by itself is a nice glaze too. So we can always do that in some of it, but these guys need to be filled in. So you can see, I'm just taking that lighter green and just getting that back in. You can tell that these would be brighter on the tips because it's dark under there. The tips are out here, it would be brighter. So you could add some light bits here and there. So it's sort of just smudging a little bit with our dark side. And like I said, if you sometimes go with just your, your primary yellow or your cad, something bright, and put just a little glaze on some of them here and there, it just gives it a nice bright, maybe even a tiny bit there. I want just different colors in my leaves. I want the other edge to be kind of a really light teal, not teal, sorry, like a lime green. That just doesn't do it. That has white. That came out of the bar, bottle, that sour apple. But if I take a lot of just my primary white and a little bit of the green, I can sometimes get a nice bright edge. And that is not showing up on camera. So let me just add a little white to it or use that, use the lighter color. Let's see how it looks. I want it to be dark on the left side and light on the other. So there, there's kind of a light, you can see that a little bit. I'm gonna go with that sour apple with some yellow in it because I want to have a light on the right side. You can see I'm laying it on and then sometimes just blending it with the brush while it's wet. If I just go down the right side with the yellowy color and then I can sort of smudge it so it doesn't look like a line. So let's go all around and do that. And I'm just gonna put it just down and soften it. It might not show up too, too much, but I'll go back if I need to. And I almost am just patting on the color. I like a little texture on there now. It doesn't have to be all blended perfectly. Just kind of pat it in. It's going the lightest on the opposite side of the dark. You could have started the opposite way if you wanted. 
If a leaf is on top of each other, this one's on top of this one, it's darker under there, it'll get it lighter on top, it sort of pops it forward a little bit. And I like to even take a little of the teal we used in the background, pop that into the middle of some of them here and there. Doesn't mean every one, but again, it brings that color in that we were using in the painting and it just kind of gives it a little something. And that's kind of what they're gonna look like. We're gonna get some veins on them, but I do go and I'm going to go with my smaller brush. I'm going to take this yellow and add some white to it. Let's see what happens. I think on some, I might just want to do a little bit of that light yellow, especially if it's one that's on top of another. They're getting a little more whimsical now, a little more brush strokes. You can look at the photo to it pretty clear about how I went down some of them with this you know, nice bright bit of white with yellow, sorry. A little brighter in here in some of them, a little lime green in there maybe. And then I'm going to put the veins in and you can see how we get really a lot of little brush strokes. So it's not really blended super well. Something like this one here looks a little bit too harsh of a line to me. Once the, the, lead, the veins on it won't matter so much, but you could always just tuck in a little of the light green and smudge it a little bit. Now I'm going to get my rogue petals here that so that they aren't, the centers aren't all exactly together. And just take a, you can take some bright white now, even because these have all sort of uh, fade it in so get some you know really heavy white bits here and there but if you put it everywhere that's not going to stand out so you just need them in a few places and this is what I mean I'm not going to I want some of the centers to be just obscured by the petals sometimes I just go right around with laying on some thick sometimes it's just on the side uh, I just don't want them all to be that little eye shape and now we are going to do all those fun little lines and the dots and then that little check. And it's super simple, but just a quick look to see where we're starting. Um, all the heavy strokes are there, but we're gonna use our liner brush and do some little thin ones like we did on the hair. So that means fresh white. Oh, I have fresh white on my other palette. My liner brush or any thin detail brush that you can get away with, but really this paint is so thick. Give it a good bit of water until you feel like it's ink consistency. And now you can have fun with this. I'm going to do my veins in my leaves first. And um, you know what I didn't do is I did have a dark green vein coming up. I don't know if you'll see it as much on this. You could do it whatever way you want. But I did uh, my, my first painting. These leaves were smaller and there was a dark vein that connected them. Something like this here. This one came out a little different. So um, here too. Actually, you know what? It looks like I did dark veins and then the white. So let's do this. So I'm going to um, take this white off my liner brush like I just told you to put on. And let's just pick up the dark, really dark, almost a black green for the first go round for the veins. These are just the little vein lines in your leaves. So I've got, it's very dark green. It's almost black, really thin down. And I'm going to do it up close so you can see it, kind of. So I go right down the middle of the flower, lift, and give it the little veins. And this stroke is easy if you have your paint as a right consistency. Because remember, if it was thick, it's going to drag and you're going to try to press down. But if you just press down with your liner brush and lift, 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 lift. So press and lift it off the paper. And then you get those little fine strokes. Press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. It's not because you don't have a steady hand or or you can't paint a thin line. Brush and consistency of the paint has a lot to do with it. So again, it's a little stroke you could practice, but I'm going to go down the center of each flower uh, vein leaf <laughs> like that. And just and it's got to be pretty dark. Mine's fading a little, so I'm going a little heavy on the black side because we're going to go over this with white. And you just put all these little veins in where you can. 
I noticed I didn't do them just white. I had this as an under base for them, which I know it's just one extra little step, but again, it just adds a little oomph to your painting. So it's kind of vague, but you see them. Now we'll do them in white. And now when I do them on white, I'm not trying to go right over them or to the side of them. I'm just going to do them in white. And sometimes you're going to see the little bit of dark showing through and sometimes you won't. And this is just the same thing. They're very light and washy. And I'm just doing the same thing. And I don't know why, but I like the way it looked with both of the shades. The little long stems that are connected them, I didn't do white, but just on the leaf itself, I just went and did a few. Again, I'm not looking at where they already are. I'm just doing them again. And I'll hold it up to you close and you can see if you think it makes a difference. It only takes a minute, so I think it's a nice little added touch. I could do quite a few because the paint is really that thin and watery. Now I'm going a little heavier. And I can you can use a shorter uh, tip detail if you want, or the big one here. I'm going to try this one if I have to switch. I'm getting the paint really pretty much, um, oop, not pink. I got pink by mistake. I'm making it uh, still watered down a little bit, but I want it to be heavier consistency to that real wash we just did because I'm going to go around my leaves now, and this is the whimsical part. I'm just on the, um, on, I just kind of wiggle the brush and give that little, um, leaf kind of a fun shape so one side i kind of wiggle it i don't paint it with that shape but with this little white line it kind of is kind of fun and i will show you that in a second it kind of outlines it it straightens any lines out if you have any that are wacky doesn't have to go right on the edge of the leaf it kind of goes out further and see what i'm doing there it's just a heavier white wiggly line just for fun. And I do these around the roses as well. So, and again, I like it when you can almost go out a little further and not be a slave to like exactly where the line is that you painted. You could go make little curvy bits on the end. I have a little rough end on some of my leaves. The paint kind of dragged. I cover them right up with this. And look at how nice it'd be when you go right over on the black section there. And now I would do the same thing. I'm going to actually make a bunch of dots in the middle. I'm doing them with the brush and not like a, a stylus or something because I don't want them to be perfect. I want them to sort of be smudgy a little bit. I'm going to make some of them yellow, but if we went on to the centers, the dark center now with yellow, it wouldn't show up because the yellow is so transparent. But if we dab it on top of the white there now, I have some nice bright yellows. So that's just little dots thrown on there. And I outline these guys the same way as the leaves. I do a bit of a wiggly line, kind of like we did for the hair. And it's just kind of a fun little, I don't know, it just kind of spreads the flowers out like it's more of a bouquet and they're not all tightly clad little individual roses. You can really just it makes them just look like they're open a little more, I guess. I'm not sure what what the deal is, but I do all around the edges like that. Like I said, I got to go right out, right on top of the leaves even. Kind of a heavy stroke. And then I'm going to do some right inside. I can just do some heavier ones here. And almost I'm not really I'm going right into that thick part of the paint, really, and almost blobbing it on. It's almost like a three-dimension a little bit now. And I'm just making some of those strokes bright white and heavier, just for texture, just for fun, whatever you want. And now I will just dab in. I can use the same brush. I could dab in the yellow. 
and just get some yellow dots in there. Some will be a little see-through, but some are gonna hit the white dots and be a little brighter, and that's what we want. We don't want them all to be the same shape and the same uh, intensity of the color. We just wanna have some in there. That is all you need for um, the roses. I think that's good. It's Jamie, it's a ratty old brush to be honest. Like I always wet it before I show you guys because when it's dry, it's all splayed out. So believe it or not, and it's just a um, script liner. Don't recognize the name. Oh, Princeton. It's a two, Princeton two. But honestly, it is kind of scattered a lot of times, but it uh, works well. And it's one of my favorites. It's hiding all the time. I can never find it. It's always hiding in my brushes. But so I put a little detail on the uh, vase too for, for now. So I'm going back into that with the, with the thin down paint a bit. And I'm going to give you a trick to making a straight line sort of that I learned in high school back in the commercial art days. And it holds true to still to this day. And Laurie, if you're watching at some point, it was Mr. Muti or Bruce. It was Mr. Muti's technique in high school. And I, and I still use it to this day. I'm going to uh, put these little lines on that you see here. It's not a solid line. I don't want it to be a perfect line across because I'd never get it that way. I started, I stop, I start, and I add some little dots. And I'm going to put them in, and I'm going to tell you my little technique of, of getting a straight line. So sometimes it's just a dab and a dash, and then it's a line. And here's the trick. When you are drawing or painting, I use it for, and you're drawing to do a line, and you're going to go across like this, and you're going straight across, and the line's wiggling, and it's going every which way, and you don't know where it's going. If you put your eye on the edge of the brush and look where it's going and not where your brush is, you won't believe how your, your, your hand will follow your eye. So you just look ahead of the line. It sounds crazy, but try it because it works. Um, and that I learned in high school for drawing and, it, and I still use it today. So sometimes it's like a couple of dots and then it's a line and it can stop and start. And same down here. Just, I don't know why, just sort of worked with a pad. And I know this was sort of the highlights on some of the samples. But I liked it when I went in and went back in and did a few dots. So maybe like a dot here and then a dash. You can look at the picture for a sample, but don't try to do it exactly the same. It's just a little, I don't know. It's fun, right? I don't know. Right, Terry, exactly, right? That's how we should um, go through life. Look where we're going, not where we've been. Uh-uh-uh. It is um, it is fun just to see what people are doing too, and don't feel bad that you can't be painting at the same time because you know what they're all the, the replays will be there. I have lots of things up there, and you go when you can, and sometimes just break it up into few minute sessions. So I I enjoy just watching people paint too, and that's that is soothing and enjoyable for me. Okay, one last thing is this little plaid. It's super easy. I'm, oh, we want to do a little shading though. Sorry, we got going to do a little shading. The two ways to do it, and I'll show you them both here as a little recap. You can do wet and wet. So if this paint was wet, right, we just put it on, it was wet. We don't have to wet the whole thing. And then we wanted to get the shadow, but we wanted to do it while that was wet and then blend it with our dry brush. I would just quickly put on my dark. It's like kind of a maroon. It was kind of this dark pink I was kind of using. Let's see. So I've got wet paint. I've got wet orange paint there. I'm putting on the wet shadow color. And then I can just take just take the brush I was using and dry it off and then work at blending it. And that could be your shadow. And you could go in and if you thought it had to be darker, you know, sometimes I do like that whole putting it on the corner of the brush and doing it all in one stroke. That's one way, wet and wet, two colors of wet, and then you're blending it. And then there's the wash. So I'm going to show you the wash if you want. I'm getting a clean brush now. Just water on it. I would say clean water, but my water is not clean. But I'm just putting on wet brush, not dripping, but wet, taking that shadow color I want to use to, on the corner of my brush. 
before I go right to my painting, though, I'm going to pat it out a little bit. So look at that nice blend I get just with water and the, and the pigment. And then I was doing a shadow on the inside of the arm on this. So you could just simply run that right across and you've got your blend with one stroke pretty much. So that's two ways. And I do that a lot in all my lessons. I show people both ways. We practice it. Um, it just... It just depends if I can paint fast enough to have both colors wet or if I want to go back and just do this sort of a, I'm using the water here to blend it. And I could just bring it out as much as I need to. So that's basically, I had a little bit more of a shadow under here maybe. I had a little bit of a highlight on her dress, but I'm gonna skip that. I think we can just go right ahead to the plaid and because that's where everyone's going to be looking. And when I do the little plaids, all the stripes, even little windows and houses, I like to have a few sizes of a flat brush that's the right size. So for some little houses, I could use one stroke for my windows with this, one stroke for a door. This is going to work well for my stripes. I'm just doing them in white. I'm thinning my paint down because I want it to be see-through, and I'll show you why as we go. So I'm going to get a really thin down white. You can see my palette, good. And I am going to stop my stripes. And I just am going to do I'm trying to get that paint to be a little see-through. So you can see it's, it's hard to see, but it's a very washy uh, stroke. It's not solid white by any means. And I'm just using the, the width of the brush. You could use, if you had to, you could just use your detail brush flattened out and you'd get a nice stripe that way as well. And I'm just going to go stripes down for now and then I'll do the cross ones. I'm going to get a, probably each stroke get and load my brush again with a watered down white. Um, I'm going to start in the middle here because I want them to go straight in the middle and then I'm going to curve to the sides. So I'll curve a little bit. I'm kind of watching my width and keeping it similar, but by no means am I uh, measuring or anything. I'm just going to go and get what I can on there. I kind of need to be over here for that stripe. And, um, and I want it to be see-through, and I'll show you why once we do this last little... Now, you want enough water on your brush, but you don't want it to drip. So if it's dripping off the page, you know it's um, it's too much water. It is a little bit like a glaze, Jamie. I love to glaze, like I say, with the primary or a, you know, a primary yellow onto green things. And I'm just going to go across. I am going to curve a little on the shape of the sleeve, just for the heck of it. And the reason, well, I, I'll show you. i got to do them all, and then I'm going to show you the reason why it works. Uh, and I curved this a little bit too. Now, to make it look like the plaid, I do it really thin like that, and then I take heavy white paint, and because these little strokes are the right size, I go into the little squares now where it crosses over, because usually, you know, it would be a little darker, and I'm just going to help it along. I'm just going to put a little, a little hard to see with the glare, but you can see how those little squares are going to be darker. So, that, so the thinner you can get that wash, the more this is going to show up as your plaid. Is it plaid? Is it checked? I don't know. Plaid would be have some other lines, which I'm going to show you in a minute how you can even do plaid if you wanted. Yeah, you can see it is. it deepens it up a little bit. So I just hit those cross areas. And this is it, you guys. I know it's been a long uh, class for you, but I appreciate your patience. And remember, bite-sized pieces. You don't have to watch and paint it all at once. So that is how it makes it look a little more plaid. Now, if I was doing a plaid, a real plaid, 
I would now take my liner brush maybe and for instance, you could just take along the side and just, you know, I would go like down one side of each. I mean, I'm gonna really make it look like my shirt, I guess. And I'm just doing one side. No one's gonna notice if it's not perfectly straight or measure the stripes for you or any of those things. Just, it's a whimsical painting, anything goes. So I kind of do a lot of this sort of thing. And you can make it look more like a plaid. And you can even go ahead and, let's see. You know, you could even do like a little, you could go crazy. You could just look at some plaid patterns and really make yourself crazy. And then you can just do like little hash stripes, like this sort of thing, that crisscross. I'm not gonna make you sit through all this, but just to give you the idea, if you want to make it even fancier, you get more plaid looking like that. You could put little cuffs. You can make her with a little fancy dress. You could put, like I said, a skirt and just have the top, all kinds of things. But I appreciate you guys. This has been a little tiny two, four minutes under an hour. Now you would just look at it, stand back, set it about four or five feet away, set it in another room, glance at it as you're walking by. And those little quick glimpses are going to help you like decide what you might want to add. So anyways, I appreciate you guys all hanging out today and painting. And if you have any questions, it doesn't have to be now. It could be when you're watching the replay. Just put it in the comments and I'll be happy <clears throat> to answer it for you. So I am Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Arts. And Mary, you're welcome. I will see you in the group. And like I said, I do have an art membership. Tinker's Art, Tinker's Cardists is our membership group. And I'll put a link somewhere there in the page. And uh, thanks for painting with me. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. I will see you all next time.